hey, use code Bengal at sign up on FanDuel. You get a free $20 to play with. Also, check out my links down in the description for Twitter, Twitch, second and third channels for all different types of content that you might enjoy. So be sure to check it out and let's get into the video. What's going on guys? Bangle again here coming back at you with another video and today we are back on the uh, off-season plan series. If you guys are new, I would appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. If you are not subscribed, uh, give me a chance, man. Hit that subscribe button and uh, maybe you won't be disappointed. However, if you're a Giants fan, you might be in this one because we are going to be revamping this team, making some signings, going through the draft, re-signing some players, and let me tell you, I've waited for this one for a while now, all right? I am a Giants fan, as many of you guys know, and a fairly big one at that. And when I was going through this, it was almost like a wish list of what I want, how I want it. And when it got to the draft, man, it was it was pretty tough because you got to make choices for the franchise. And, and, and they can be tough. They really can be because you got to think about players that could be there on the board at the time. What are your needs? You have to decide... You have to decide what these needs are and what the value of those needs are. And, I, you know, I know that's pretty obvious to say, but when you're going through the draft, you're like, what do I want? What what helps this team? What makes this team immediately better? How can we make this team compete right out of the gate? And hopefully I figured it out. It, it was an interesting one, though, let me tell you. This was an up and down season for the Giants, mostly down. It was tough watching week in and week out. And I muscled through it. It was painstaking. And it was terrible. And, I mean, we'll talk about more as we get through this. But, all in all, this was a terrible season. Let's see what we can do to hopefully bring the Giants back to the promised land. So, we're going to start off with our re-signings. And there are a lot of them. Because, you know, obviously, it goes without saying, I'm going to know more about this team than any other team in the NFL. And I like to think I'm very... Um, in the know about all of them, but of course I watch every game. I know every player on this roster. The Giants hold a special place in my heart, so I am going to know more about uh, what I think they should do, and that's going to start off with the biggest re-signing of all. That is Landon Collins. This is a player, in my opinion, that absolutely needs to be re-signed. Apparently, he has expressed interest in coming back to the Giants. He is a very talented, young, strong safety. Excels with in-the-box play. Not a guy that can really play over the top, although his cover skills have improved since his time in the league. This is a player the Giants cannot let slip away. They didn't trade him at the trade deadline. They should look to hold on to him. And I, in my opinion, if they don't trade him at the trade deadline, which they didn't, you have to know that he's going to be a New York football giant next year and years to come after this. Lennon Collins has to be re-signed, and I believe he will. John Jalapio. A player that the Giants like quite a lot, and he looked pretty good. Looked like one of the Giants' best offensive linemen before he went down early in the season. So, you'd like to see him brought back. Mario Edwards, a player that I think is much better than Josh Morrow, who is an upcoming free agent. Mario Edwards should be brought back. He is a good 3-4 defensive end, a player that can play rotationally on the inside. Could also be a starter for you, depending on what happens. Kerry Wynn, another guy that needs to be brought back. A rotational player that has shown flashes of being fantastic, but that's what he is, unfortunately, a rotational player. Zach Diossi, longtime giant. He's going to remain a giant. He can retire on his own terms at his own time. He's been a good long snapper for a very long time. Been a very good special teamer as well. Zach Diossi gets a new contract. Aldrich Rosas, he's an exclusive rights-free agent, which means he cannot negotiate with any other team besides the New York Giants. So if they want to retain Aldrich Rosas, which they very much should, considering that he was arguably the best kicker in the NFL this past season, Aldrich Rosas absolutely should be re-signed. A lot of teams don't have consistency at the kicker spot. The Giants, they do. They, it's one of their best positions, if not their best position. Pound for pound, it, it is their best position. Maybe running backs right there as well. Jamon Brown, another player. The offensive line for the Giants improved upon his arrival. Wasn't necessarily so much his play. I think he's a good rotational offensive lineman. Someone that can then plug and play depending on uh, who gets injured and whatnot. And we see those all the time. The Giants were down to their third string center in Spencer Pulley. Uh, John Greco played some snaps for the Giants. We're not going to re-sign him. He's older and wasn't fantastic. And then, of course, uh, I mean injuries all over the place. You hate to see it, but they do happen. 
Corey Coleman, I can't believe I'm saying this. He's going to get re-signed as well. He looked okay with the Giants, and he's a decent return man. Obviously, a guy that couldn't even make the Browns roster. He couldn't make the Bills roster at, at wide receiver. I mean, this is this was a player that struggled mightily. But as a returner, as a rotational player, uh, Corey Coleman does make some sense to re-sign on a very, very cheap contract, which is what he's worthy of, what he will get. As far as signings, we're going to make some big ones, starting out with a bang. Earl Thomas, safety of the Seattle Seahawks. This one is uh, more want than anything. I think this would be such a smart move for the Giants. They have the money to get it done. They do. This would make Landon Collins that much better a player. In my opinion, and I, there might be some Texas bias here, but I think this is the truth. Earl Thomas was the best member of the Legion of Boom and it wasn't even that close. Richard Sherman, he had some good years, man. I'm not taking that away from him. I think a lot of that is due to who he's playing around. Cam Chancellor's another player, and I think Earl Thomas made these players look better because you can't go at Earl Thomas. He is at single high over the top safety that has been the best in the NFL at doing that since he arrived in the league in 2010. He's going to make Landon Collins a better player. He's going to let Landon Collins play in the box. You can play Earl Thomas single high over the top. He's a guy that can even come up. He is a really, really good player and worth every dollar you're going to give to him. Look at the defenses of the Seattle Seahawks, even with Richard Sherman leaving, with Cam Chancellor not playing. When Earl Thomas was in the lineup, they were a really, really good team. Bobby Wagner helps with that a lot. But look at who they had at cornerback, man. These are not great players. And you saw Shaq Griffin look pretty good, as Shaquille, uh, not Shaquem, Shaquille the cornerback. He looked really good with Earl Thomas in the lineup. Guess what happens? Earl Thomas goes out for the season. Shaquille Griffin turns to trash. He had a terrible season once Earl Thomas got injured. He's a guy that makes everybody else in the secondary way better. He's a player you need to sign. You can't have Curtis Riley going out at free safety again. We're not re-signing him. We're going out. We're making a splash signing. We are signing the best over-the-top center fielder, free safety in the NFL. This needs to happen. Another signing, Preston Brown, inside linebacker, was with the Bengals most recently. He's a run stopper. He fits the 3-4. He's a tackler. The Giants do not have anything at linebacker. I, I get that B.J. Goodson uh, played a little bit better this year. Certainly played a little bit better. Alec Ogletree is a disaster. Do not give me his five interceptions and say he was good. He cannot defend the run. He cannot tackle. And he cannot cover. He had five interceptions. Four of them were from tipped picks. This is a guy constantly out of position. And in that in that case, it works out for the best. Because yeah, how, is he, how is he getting those picks? He wasn't out of position, clearly. Well, he was. And it, gracefully landed in his hands gratefully for Alec Ogletree this is not a starting caliber linebacker the Giants were fools to trade for him fools you need to go out and get a better linebacker Preston Brown fits the bill he's a guy that can actually tackle I, I don't believe the Giants have seen a linebacker like that since Antonio Pierce the Giants need to get better to that position Preston Brown while is not a beast is at least a step in the right direction and our last free signing is arguably the biggest. And this one makes so much sense to me. It makes so much sense. Darrell Williams, offensive tackle for the Carolina Panthers, wasn't a super high draft pick. Not at all. But he was a player that was one of the best right tackles in the NFL since being in the league. Say what you will about Darrell Williams. Has never been a pro bowler. Second team all pro last year. But think about this. He was drafted by the Panthers in the fourth round of the 2015 NFL Draft out of Oklahoma. Who is drafting him? Dave Gettleman, current GM of the New York Football Giants. Why would you not go after one of your best draft picks ever, arguably, in Darrell Williams in terms of actual production from that player and the round that he came out of, a fourth-round pick that's a second-team All-Pro last year? This is, this is a guy that makes so much sense for the Giants. It's a no-brainer. Go back to Dave Gettleman, who drafted you, who would be willing to pay you, hopefully, to address right tackle. You have your left tackle, Nate Solder. He came on really strong at the end of the year. You have your left guard. Hopefully, with John Halapio at center, you have your center. 
you need to improve. Right guard and your right tackle with Chad Wheeler is a disaster. Daryl Williams would be such an impact signing to go back to the guy that drafted you to get paid with the Giants. This needs to happen. I can't stress this enough. Now going to the NFL draft. This was tough, man. This was really tough because there are a number of players at round one that make a lot of sense for the Giants. I know a lot of people are being screaming at me to take Dwayne Haskins, right? Some fools are going to want Kyler Murray at number six for the Giants. But you know what, man? I got to go Cleveland Furl here. I think he's one of the best edge players in the entire draft. And you'd have to say, obviously, you're taking him at number six. But his first step is among the best that I've ever seen of any edge player. He is so explosive. His hands are getting better each year. He's a guy that had high production at Clemson in a good conference against good competition, against good offensive linemen. And you could say, hey, he played on a really good defensive line with Dexter Lawrence, Christian Wilkins, Austin Bryant. He was the guy getting double teamed most often on tape, and he was the guy finding success most often. The Giants have no pressure on the edge, right? Olivier Vernon came on strong at the end of the year. He was a guy that was injured a lot. Lorenzo Carter is a rotational player that can hopefully drop back into coverage, but he's a rotational edge rusher at best now. You need to get consistent pressure off the edge. You need to take some of the pressure, no pun intended, off Olivier Vernon, and you need to get an edge rusher on the other side. Cleveland Furl is a guy that played right end. He played left end. He came off both edges, and he did so very successfully. Probably comes off better on the right side, but... This is a surefire difference maker at edge. One of my favorite players in the entire draft. I think the Giants need to target a big difference maker. Whether it's Dwayne Haskins, maybe your quarterback of the future. Whether it's Devin White, a linebacker that would provide a lot of athleticism that you don't have. Whether it's a cornerback with the Giants really don't have. We're letting B.W. Webb go. We're not signing a cornerback in free agency. Janoris Jenkins has maybe seen his best days. So maybe Greedy Williams makes some sense. DeAndre Baker, whoever it is, an offensive lineman. I could see a tackle, right? could see Jonah Williams. could see another tackle rise up. Maybe Juwan Taylor from the Gators, right, Florida. But I think you need a surefire difference maker at that edge spot. Cleveland Furl is a monster. This is a player I would love to see the Giants get. Round two. Here's your cornerback. It's Byron Murphy out of Washington, a player that could very easily fall to the second round. Of course, a Giants pick. Uh, near the very top of the second round. And they need cornerback help, man. You were trotting out B.W. Webb at your starting cornerback. He was a disaster. That's not to say that Janoris Jenkins was much better. You're playing Grant Haley as your nickel cornerback. Like, cornerback is a, is a position of need for the Giants, as pretty much everything on defense is. I think their offense has potential. The offensive line got better at the end of the year. I'm not sure you go offensive line with this spot. I think you're getting better. We addressed some of that in free agency. Whether Jamon Brown's your starting right guard or not, I don't know. But you have Jalapio coming back at center. Your left side of the offensive line is fine. Will Hernandez played really well as a rookie, especially down the stretch. Nate Solder figured it out in a new blocking scheme for the first time. Down the stretch, he was awesome. Jamon Brown is a decent fill-in for now, and Daryl Williams makes that right side a whole lot better. You don't need to go tackle right now. You need to go cornerback. And if Byron Murphy is available in the second round, which I think there's a very good chance that he is, you need to improve your secondary immensely. You come out with Earl Thomas, Janoris Jenkins, Landon Collins, and Byron Murphy? That could be one of the best secondaries in the league immediately. Byron Murphy makes a ton of sense for me in the second round. The Giants, of course, do not have a third round pick, but they do have a fourth. And we're going Daryl Williams, offensive line out of Mississippi State. And, and believe me, it's not lost on me that I have Darrell Williams going twice here. Of course, Darrell Williams with one R, the offensive tackle for the Panthers, or formerly, I guess now, and Darrell Williams, an offensive lineman out of Mississippi State. I think it's pretty hilarious. It's about as funny as something in this type of video will get. And he's a good player, man. He's a guy that can play guard and can play center. What do you need at this point? Potentially a center, potentially a guard on that right side. Darrell Williams was a guy that was really solid at Mississippi State. If it was my choice, if this was the third round, I'd probably go Elgin Jenkins here. I got a guy that maybe can play all five positions on the offensive line. I think it's going to boost his sock. I think he's a guy that's going to go second, maybe third round. Could sneak in the back end of the first, if I'm being honest. But Darrell Williams is a guy that could be here at the top of the fourth round and would be an impact playmaker, a difference maker on the offensive line. Plug and play. That's what it comes down to. Plug and play could start day one. Another guy that could start day one. 
It's Bo Benshawel, a guard out of Wisconsin, a monster of a man. This guy is huge. Big playmaker, bruiser. Just a powerhouse at right guard. Maybe even left guard. I hope the Giants wouldn't have to play him there. He could come in, also start at right guard immediately. Darrell Williams could start at center immediately. You could bring in two guys in the fourth round that are just plug and play, play them where you need them, make them compete for the starting job. And in the fourth round, this is good value, man. You've improved your offensive line mightily in free agency. And now I think mightily in the draft as well. Round five, we're going little Jordan Humphrey. Wide receiver out of Texas, a guy that, in my opinion, should not have declared for the draft. I am a Texas Longhorns fan. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. Of course, the longtime subscribers of the channel will for sure. And Lil Jordan, while this is the funniest name in the draft for sure, Lil Jordan is anything but little. About 6'4", maybe 6'5". He's a really good receiver. Did play in the Big 12, but his size was his best asset. This is a jump ball, red zone threat receiver, and it's something that the Giants really lack. I know you have Odell. He's a jump ball receiver. He's only 5'11", man. And, and size does matter to a degree. Sterling Shepard, another slot guy. And what are you, Cody Latimer, who I, I don't think is going to be back. Benny Fowler, are you kidding me? Lil Jordan's a guy that can come in rotationally right away and be an impact playmaker. He should be available anywhere from the 4th, 5th, or the sixth round. So, Lil Jordan of the Giants here, potentially upgrading receiver, I think is fantastic value. Another player in the fifth round here, it's Christian Miller, an edge rusher out of uh, Alabama. What it comes down to with Christian Miller for me is uh, he is a rotational player that is going to be an edge rusher on third down, maybe even a stand up linebacker. He has the size and the athleticism to do that in the 3 4. Uh, a versatile player that I think would make a huge difference for the Giants, at least on special teams out the gate. But uh, I like the value here in the fifth. Round six, we're going Sheldrick Redwine, cornerback out of Miami, overshadowed by his teammates this past year, uh, but certainly a decent player, and he's a captain. Giants love their captains. They love drafting captains. They really do. And um, Sheldrick Redwine certainly fits the bill in that regard. So cornerback out of Miami, rotational cornerback for the Giants, another guy that has potential to come in and get reps immediately in the sixth round. I know it's crazy. That's how bad the Giants cornerbacks have been, but a guy that certainly should make an impact on special teams right away. Sheldrick Redwine, cornerback out of Miami here in the sixth. Giants have two seventh round picks. We're going to start it off short and sweet here with Jackson Barton, offensive tackle out of Utah. Rotational tackle. If somebody gets injured, plug him in uh, and play him. He'll compete for... Uh, reps on special teams initially and then he'll be hopefully a decent backup offensive lineman and then rounding out the draft with the last pick here in the seventh round we're going ken webster cornerback out of ole miss this is this is a player you're taking a chance on uh had some off the field issues at ole miss and then he got injured and then didn't really appear to be the same player lost a lot of his athleticism when he came back didn't really have the same speed but if he rehabs and, and gets back to 100 percent uh, it's decent value here. It's probably a fourth-round caliber player that's going to fall to the seventh round if he even gets drafted at all. So I don't mind Ken Webster here. I think he's he has some upside. Let's take a look at the revamped offensive line of the New York Giants with Nate Solder, Will Hernandez, and then, of course, John Halapio returns. I'm going to have ben ben or Bo Benshawel coming in immediately. He will be the starting right guard. And then Darrell Williams, of course, the Panthers, or the former Panthers right tackle, sliding in to play right tackle. I think that's a much better looking offensive line. Certainly uh, much better than anything they've had over the last two or three years. Evan Ingram, of course, an extension of that line, you could say, although he can't block worth anything, but someone that's developing their route running. His hands are getting better as well. Evan Ingram's a pretty good player. I'm not going to go much further than that right now. And then this is what your receiving core looks like right away. It's Odell Beckham Jr., Sterling Shepard in the slot, and then, yep, I, I don't believe it either. Corey Coleman uh, at wide receiver two. It's an interesting player. And that's that's what I'll say right now. He is good upside, a player that went really high a number of years ago. First round pick of the, of the Browns. He's only 24 years old, I believe. He does have some upside. If you can unlock that potential, this is a good player for you. Uh, I'm not overly excited about him starting. And then I know people are going to be pissed I didn't take a quarterback. They I know they really are going to be. But, dude... I'm not ready to move on just now. I don't think when this team could potentially compete for a playoff spot, 
And I know that sounds wild. They're, they were a terrible team. Only won five games. I think more than half of the games they lost this year were by one score or less. I think that says a lot about this team. And they were really, really bad roster-wise. This is a much better team. And uh, Eli Manning is acceptable right now, in my opinion, as a starting quarterback. Go draft a quarterback next year in 2020 with Tua and Jake Fromm. And, and a number of different players. Jacob Eason. There are going to be guys available. Maybe even if you have to wait till 2021 with Trevor Lawrence. Do something then, dude. You don't have to take a quarterback right now. You don't have to take your quarterback. You can compete for a playoff spot, maybe. The NFC East is weak. It is a weak division. The weakest in football by far. I know they had two playoff teams, right? That doesn't concern me. That, that, wild that two playoff teams got in. Wild. It's a bad division. You don't need to take a quarterback right now. You can compete for a playoff spot. You can. Saquon Barkley is one of the best running backs already in the NFL. Top three, top five maybe. Really, really good player. This revamped offense can compete. Eli can still be the guy for at least one more year. Probably one more year. Hopefully you restructure his contract. And if not, you know what? Give Kyle Aletta a shot. Give him a shot, man. It's not worth it to take a quarterback this year, in my opinion. If you can get Dwayne Haskins, fine. That's another way this shakes out. He sits for a year. Your team's worse, but maybe you have your quarterback of the future right away. I can see that happening. I know people are going to be taking my head off for not taking a quarterback. I'm all right, man. I, I think we compete for a playoff spot. You, you got to give it a shot. You got to try. Get one more year out of Eli. Squeeze it out. If you go 9-7 and seven and make the playoffs, Giants fans know. If any team can go from 9-7, 10-6, make the playoffs, and then win the Super Bowl, it's the Giants. They've already done it twice with Eli at quarterback. You, you squeeze out the last few drops of them. That's where we are at this point. That's that sounded gross, but we're going to move on to the defense. And this defense is completely revamped. We didn't talk about it earlier. The reason the Giants don't have a third-round pick is because they spent a compensatory pick, or not a compensatory pick, uh, a pick in the supplemental draft on Sam Beal last year, which took away their third this year. Sam Beal is a player out of Western Michigan with good cover skills, good athleticism, that didn't get a snap over this past year. He was injured the entire season. Maybe he's a guy that comes in, competes for a starting job right away. Right now, we're going to pencil him in as a nickel spot. We have Byron Murphy, our second round pick, uh, first round talent maybe at that far uh, boundary corner spot. Janoris Jenkins as well. And then your linebacking core. We bring in Preston Brown, B.J. Goodson. It's a decent 3-4 uh, linebacker combo. And then, of course, arguably the best safety duo in the NFL now, Earl Thomas, single high, over-the-top monster, and Landon Collins, basically a third linebacker in the box. Beast with some coverability, some speed, some athleticism, great pursuit. And then we have our defensive line, which, let me tell you, this is a good defensive line, man. Of course, you do lose... Uh, Damon Harrison, it hurt a lot. You didn't need to. He had such a team-friendly contract. You had control of him for two more years. You didn't need to do that. You didn't need to trade him for a fifth. Why did you do that? But Dalvin Tomlinson's a really good player. BJ Hill came on really, really strong as well. He was a good run stopper, really good run stopper, that started to build up some real pass rush ability. Get some pressure after the quarterback, right? Olivier Vernon was a guy that was the best player on the Giants at least in terms of PFF grade and probably in production as well, despite only playing, um, I believe it was 11 games. He was a good player down the stretch for the Giants for sure. And then, of course, uh, Mario Edwards at that left-end spot, basically a defensive tackle in the 3-4. And then Cleveland Furl, a really good freak athlete coming off the edge at left outside linebacker. His 10-yard split in the 40-yard dash is going to be insane. He is so quick so fast and he does have some pretty good hands as well some ability to rush the passer defend the run this is a really really good edge rusher in my opinion and uh this is a good revamp team of course fellow giants fans you're gonna have to let me know what you think and uh i'm gonna be honest this is a, i think best case scenario for this team so i probably will disagree with you if you disagree with that but uh you, you know you win some you lose some that's gonna do it for me hope you guys enjoyed and i will see you in the next one Take it easy.